The best Armored Core 6 player in Japan right now is a guy called 432. They are widely considered to be the best player in the world, winning well over half of the tournaments they enter. Absolutely insane pilot. And they just lost to a lightweight. Which is ridiculous, to say the least. So today, I have with me Ramen Rook, who is the best lightweight player over here in the Western community, to talk about their build, how it works, and more importantly, why they were able to beat the best pilot in the game. It's currently 8 a.m. I haven't slept yet. And <laughs> a lightweight player just beat one of the best players in the world. Am I losing? Am I dreaming, Ramen? Is this actually happening? Is this real? Get pranked. It was all a joke. Ramen was freaking out uh, in my DMs and on uh, the Armored Core, like the Striker Hut Discord, about 432 losing to a lightweight in tournament. And here we are. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and click the button. Or we'll talk about this a little bit. Uh, a Japanese do the Japanese scene does tournaments like almost every day. Uh, they do best of ones, so it makes it a little. Oh no, it is the exact same build. Look at that. It's uh, it's is that laser? I assume it's laser drones too, right? Yes. Okay, so this is four three two's build, and that just look at look at Nick's build. So Nick's Nick's I can't I don't know how to pronounce it. I apologize. They're running the standard BVO setup, which is uh, Basho Ocellus Viento. Which is a very, very strong lightweight setup. It's the best set of lightweight setup in the game. Raman actually ran it and got ninth place at the recent tournament. I uh, definitely go watch that video. I just uploaded it either today or yesterday because I, I just finished that gosh darn video and now this is happening. So that's cool. I had a whole section where I talk about how Raman got ninth and that's insane as a lightweight player in a game where lightweights aren't very good. And now we have the best player in the world losing to one. So that's kind of insane. They messed up the kick tech there. So the kick tech, if you didn't know, uh, is a thing where you can, if you kick, if you're doing the kick animation, you get staggered, you fall down, you actually get gravity affects your AC. And uh, they failed there, but... Raman, I'm losing my mind. Like, this is insane. <laughs> can you <laughs> say something so I know you're there and I'm not alone? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it is pretty crazy. It definitely lights a fire in my heart. Dude, like that... Uh, I, uh, the Risa versus Raman, like, set up that uh, uh, tournament set that happened... Uh, in the video that either again uploaded today or the day before, you can find it on my channel. Uh, it was the it's the top 16 video for the thousand dollar tournament. It looked impossible, and like and and like you know, Raman's like better now than he was then. You know, he's figured that matchup a little bit more. But also, Risa was just playing on fire. But the fact that like okay, so that that first phase is over. Four three two does take that first phase pretty solidly. Now I will say, four three two Sagar Bar was almost over. Uh, was almost, you know, at the edge. They were almost staggered there. They would have just died, because laser slicer is laser slicer. And as long as, you know, actually functions as a weapon, it does a billion damage. Uh, 6,532, I think, to be exact, on Basho Arms. But, uh, but good lord, dude, this is... I'm losing my mind. I, how does he even do it? How does Nick even do this? Because I can't find a reality where Dual Zim PS loses to Lightweight. Like, th this is one of the hardest matchups for Lightweights, just in general. Look at that stagger boat up, though. Well, Striker. Hit me with it. Perhaps with the we can go through it, uh, like, scene by scene and uh -huh. talk about it. I I'm down. Let let's watch the full thing, and then we'll go through it and actually analyze the fights and stuff like that. Because right now, I still haven't seen it. Like, I I, 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 was, in a, I was in a voice call talking about YouTube with a, with the, a friend of mine, uh, Lost, if y'all know them from Elden Ring. And, like, and then Ramen just starts yeah, There we go. That's it. That's it. That's game. That, dude. And then Raman just is in my DMs like, yo, 432 just lost to a lightweight, and now I'm losing my mind. Alright, so like, I, I, I... You gotta start running duo twos, I guess. I guess that's the, uh, <laughs> that's the takeaway. Yeah, we can talk about those, uh, at a later part of the video, but... It's something I've considered for a long time. And I've gone, like, I can never be so certain on which missiles to bring. So, so for those who don't know, uh... BVO is a very, like, it, it's probably the most solved thing in the game when it comes to a, to a setup. Like, this is the only lightweight viable, the only viable lightweight build in the game is Basho Viento Ocellus with some sort of melee stagger. Usually it's a slicer, but it could be hammer, could be pulse blade. And then you have, uh, because laser dagger does like a thousand less damage than pulse blade. Don't believe people's lies, it's not super great. Uh, and then you have, like, you know, Duo 2s or MLT 6 or um, VPM, some people have started the run, which is weird, but, you know, whatever. And like you basically just your whole the whole point of having a lightweight is that you can position yourself really well to dump your Vientos into the enemy AC, and then you do like a billion damage. Also, what is that T pose? What the heck? I've never seen that before. 
And that's, dude, that's it. That's just it. Was So let's go back and let's look a little bit uh, through that game, especially the two that they ended up winning. Uh, but yeah, that's BVL. The, the exact frame is always solved. It's always BB44D head, Albich core, uh, knock rider legs, and Bastro arms. It's on the Santi generator. It's got the Ocellus FCS, and it's got dual Vientos. Hence the name BVL. Basho, Viento, Ocellus. Now, Nick is actually rocking it uh, in this in this clip. They're running the uh, the standard setup, but they are running Duo 2s, which I actually don't really see very often. It's usually MOTO 6. I want to see, and actually, that's what I run myself when I play it. Now, Roman, you want to go ahead and take care of this? Because you know lightweight's better than I do. Will you share your screen for me on Discord? Oh, yeah, I should so probably do that, on the huh? Same page. I should probably do that, huh? That's, that's a good... Uh, oh, yeah, you're actually DMing me right there. Share screen with me when YouTube time. <laughs> share screen. Yeah, you're yelling at me to do it. I'm freaking out, so can you blame me? <laughs> Cause dude, I okay, cannot. the thing is, uh, before we get started, before we get started in the actual analyst, uh, an, an analyst analysis, we might be getting a patch tomorrow, like the strip tomorrow. Cause you know, on, on the first week, the first like Thursday of every month, we've gotten a patch. If you look at my, my patch videos, if you look at like Bandai Namco's website, we're getting patches almost, uh, basically at the start of every single month. We're gonna be getting a patch tomorrow. Hell, the Game Awards are tomorrow. We might see a trailer for PvP 2.0. Which like is rumored to be happening. So like I'm losing my mind because a lightweight just beat the best player in the fucking world on what might be the last day of this patch. <laughs> like, are you kidding me? That's insane. All right. So well, I'm gonna go ahead and you you take it over, my friend, because you you know this a lot more than I do. All right. So yeah, you're pretty. It's pretty simple stuff. If you see the stagger bar. It's obvious who's winning right now, and the only reason this is possible is because of a little Zimmerman tech that Nick is aware of. It's not really tech, but dodging it. You can dodge Zimmermans pretty consistently by looking at the firing arm of the ACs. That's how I do it, for anyone wondering. But uh, yeah, let's go ahead and pause and watch this back. Okay, I'm down. So we're going to kind of like pause it and go a little very, very slowly through this. All right, you know, I can I actually... Because I want to do it like a proper... Playback speed, let's do uh let's do point five for a little bit. Yeah. So go ahead and go all the way back to before Pulse Summers are even popped. Okay, right, back before Pulse Summers. Dude, I am so excited. This is insane. Yeah, this is a good spot. Right, so right okay, cool. We'll go we'll go with that. Okay, so we so see every time he fires, he's trying to quick boost as soon as the arms go up. Right there is a good example. And then... The stagger is gotten. The punish. Him. Yeah, you, you get so, one. Yeah, go, go ahead. At this point, Nick is only at half stagger. And now he, his objective is to just live as long as possible. So right here, they're in hugging range. He pulls armors. You can see that 432 is trying to QB circle to the left, AB circle. But that was like in the direction of Nick, so Nick was able to start spamming Vientos while they're both in assault boost. So now 432 is already at half while Nick is still has pulse armor. I want to say and then from there it just kind of snowballs into Nick's advantage. Yeah, because the thing is with lightweights is that they basically have two lives, like one where you stagger them the first time and they pulse armor, and the second one where they just die. Uh, the best thing about BVO is that you could basically do the same thing to the heavyweights, unless they're running like Born Mizza tank or something like that. You get one, like, just one uh, flurry of slicer hits off, and then you get, like, a, a full combo into the kick, and they're basically just dead. So both players just have two lives, basically. And yes. that is a perfect example of how, a if Bertel gets nerfed anytime soon, the entire game changes. Because the reason why, uh, one, of the, one of the biggest issues with BVO, and Raman, you can definitely test this, you've definitely... I uh, talked about th this complaint before, is that Burzel AB is faster than Alula AB, even if, like, you've got, like, 30k weight on them. Even if you are 30k weight l lighter, they're still faster than you. So one thing I want to say is that this catch mid-assault boost was only possible because of the distance between the two characters when Pulse Armor was popped. Mm -hmm. So what usually happens in my games is that I have to, like, respect the Zimmermans a little bit more, and it creates this artificial distance. So, like, if I were to use Pulse Armor at a range of, like, 80 meters, my opponent can just turn around with Burzel and I can never catch. Yeah, because it, it, the Burzel is just too gosh darn powerful. It is, uh, it is ridiculous. It is, it is making heavyweights the fastest ACs in the game, which is, you know, not okay. 
yeah, Nick was able to pop his pulse armor when they were in hugging distance, and that kind of kind of secured the win for him at that point, mm. since he was able to get the mag dump off. Yeah, which like that, that there's a. So you might be thinking to yourself, well, why not just run BVO on a heavyweight with, uh, you know, just running a heavyweight with Burzel? The issue is that the reason why Vientos are so powerful is because you you have those really light knock rider legs and the really high boost speed to be able to actually get in with it, like within um, 130 meters range for the entirety of the mag uh, mag dump because Basho Viento Ocellus is so powerful because Vientos on Basho arms with Ocellus actually reaches the, the hard cap of 21 frames to lock onto an AC. Which is super duper important. Uh, even if you're hard locked, you can still reach that 21 frame cap. So you are locking on instantaneously. It is less than is more, a little bit more than a third of a second. For you to lock on. Yeah. So you were getting into the second game, Roman. Go ahead and take it away. Alrighty. So this one is a little more straightforward than the for the, the than phase two. This one we could probably watch in normal speed for a while. They're just gonna fight in mid range, you so gotcha. this is where like the uh, the duo missiles kind of shines at this range. And one of the reasons why I have I've been neglecting to use them is because these kinds of things almost never happen in Western lobbies. Yeah, usually the guy with the Zimmerman shield is going to be aggressing the entire time, mm -hmm. and they want to play for the kick into Zimmerman confirm. It, it, it's such a weird like difference in playstyle because like four through two is so patient. Where like Risa, the best uh, the best dual zim player over here, is extremely aggressive. Like if you saw the uh, like the, 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 your games in the thousand dollar tournament were like fifteen seconds long. Like they, they were super, super, super short. Yeah. And just good lord, dude! Like the the stagger that built up on the Vientos is insane. And then they go look at that. This was an insane laser slicer. Yeah, that was a runner for pivot there. Like just being able to actually get because like if you look at the uh let's actually watch that back again in slow-mo, because I, I am such a huge fan of that. That was freaking awesome. It was beautiful. It's like if you look at if you look at the exact height, because vertical verticality is such an issue with melee in this game, and that's that's a big issue with BVO. That's why 4 through 2 went up in the first place. That's why they're going upwards, because they know that they, there is a high chance that they whiffed laser slicer here. I think he wanted to go for the kick tech as well. Yeah, and like, like if you, again if you don't know the kick tech. Uh, if you are in kick animation and you get staggered, you will fall down. Your gravity will affect your AC, which is really dumb, but it's a tech. And they hopefully will patch it out, because good lord, it, it hurts lightweights a lot. Uh, but, like, just look at that. That catch was beautiful, dude. Like, look at the angle here. Th that angle must have been, it's like, like... It's like 90 degrees at the point of the stagger. Yeah, look at that. That is insane. That is so strong. It, it's probably hitting it, like, the uh, one of the last few frames, too. And then, you, of course, you can confirm in the kick here. Uh, fourth is not even able to act out by the time that the kick comes out. So that's why Sli that's why Slicer is running BVL, because good lord the damage is insane. But that was wonderfully played by Nick. Oh my by Nick. Oh my gosh. That is dude, I am actually like I, I am okay. The fact that this might be the last Japanese tournament before the next patch, because we might get one this week, unless the game awards, you know, change that up. Because again. We've got a we've got a patch first like first week of every month so far every single month so far, including September when the game was very new. So it's like this is uh, this uh, dude like the <laughs> even if we don't get a patch, lightweights might just become like not unstoppable but on even footing just through player skill alone. Because Nick played out of their mind this set, and we're able to secure it like it is like, against again. The best player in the world. Like, I don't think anyone really disputed me on that. Like, yeah, Disco exists, yeah, Tiku, and Ho like, Hawami, and, you know, uh, like, Risa. But, 432 is, like, legendary status over in Japan. Like, I can't believe how they feel right now. Like, how Japan feels? I just can't believe it, dude. Like, I, I, I really thought, like, you know, like, Ramen's really good, Nick's really good. But I'm probably gonna have to wait for a patch for these and, like, actually, like, win a tournament. No, I'm not so sure. If we don't get a patch for, like, January... Like, we, we, like, 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 even, like, if it's, like, a few months, I say like so much because, again, I'm really tired. I've not slept yet. It is currently 8, 14 a.m. I'm just losing my mind. Uh, stayed up all night working on the, uh, the video that's dropping today. But good lord, dude, that is, I, I was thinking, like, you know, maybe I'll, I'll wait for the next lightweight buffs and then, you know, Ramen's gonna be fucking unstoppable or something. And then, you know, maybe Nick will start winning tournaments over in Japan, but now I'm not so sure. Like, y'all might start winning... Just 
<laughs> Y'all might just start winning, like, after a few weeks or so. Like, what if what if Nyx just starts, like, running rampant in Japan, just starts winning, like, you know, most tournaments that they host? Like, good lord, dude. That's insanity to me. That would be the dream. Anyway, this video is running a bit long. I'm gonna finish this up, post it, and then get the heck to sleep. This is insanity. That is... Dude. What the fuck? Well, time to go grind. Yeah. Also, if you wanna, if you wanna see this, uh, this tournament and everything in its entirety, if you're interested in the Japanese scene, I will be linking this video down below. Definitely give this person a sub. Uh, even if you don't speak Japanese, it's still Armored Core. Still a lot to learn. That scene is very different than ours. It's really cool. And thanks for watching, because I know this is very different from my normal videos. It's very rushed, but holy shit, dude! That like this just happened. Like, oh my god. <laughs> But y'all have a good one. I will see y'all in the future. Especially if there's a patch soon. Y'all have a good one. Goodbye.